Hey everybody, Mike here. In today's video, we're gonna learn how to get through the hack the box starting point machine called Redeemer. So this is a system that will actually teach us a little bit about how to use Redis, which is an in-memory key value database. So this means essentially it's a really, really basic database database. It's really popular. It's used quite a bit these days. So learning Redis is a good thing and will help you build your pen testing skills pretty significantly. I promise if you keep doing this, this isn't the last time you're going to run into Redis. So that said, before we jump in, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so that you can keep going through these with me, keep the momentum up because doing this often is the secret to getting better at it. I can definitely attest to that. All right. So that said, let's jump right into the box. All right, so here we are inside of Hack the Box. Now let's go ahead down to Redeemer. We've already got it powered on, but other than that, we haven't done anything with it. So let's click on the IP address and we'll head over to Pwnbox and we'll go ahead and do our basic scan. So this is going to be nmap V for verbose, dash S capital C for scripts. And then I like to do dash N that will just disable DNS resolution. It's just a habit of mine. Uh, from there, we'll then go ahead and paste in our IP address. There we go. And let's run that scan. And I'm going to go ahead and move this here. Okay, so we see here that it ran through the scan really fast. And most importantly, we see, okay, the host is up, but all 1000 scan ports are in ignored states. And it says not shown 1000 closed TCP ports. So this is really your first lesson that Nmap will only scan by default the 1000 most common ports. So it's easy when you're starting off to look at this and say, well, Mike, there's no open ports, but that's where you got to be a little more inquisitive. You got to ask the question, well, that's only a thousand ports, but there's 65,535 of them available or 64,535, whatever math was never my strong suit. The point is, this is not all of the ports. So what we really want to do here is we want to rerun that scan, but this time we want to do dash P dash. So that right there, specifically dash P dash P alone specifies port. So if you were to just do dash P 80, this would only scan port 80, for example. But in our case, if you do dash P dash, just like that, and you rerun it, you'll see it'll actually scan, there you go, 65,535 ports. It is essentially scanning all of the ports, not just the 1,000 most common. What I typically do is I will actually run through this, the first scan we did, just to get a quick idea of what's open. Then I will open up another terminal and rerun this scan with all ports in the background while I'm doing other things, just as a good habit. So just get into that habit, always run this scan to make sure that you cover everything. Now, in this case, we see it takes a little while, but we do see discovered open port 6379. So let's go ahead and find out what that is. So 6379 TCP. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. Let's go ahead into Google. Let's paste it. And we see 6379 TCP Redis, an advanced key value cache and store. So again, we talked about this. So if we go, what is Redis? That is ultimately an in-memory, a distributed in-memory key value database. What Redis essentially is, is it allows you to have keys and values. So I can have a key of password and a value of whatever the password is. That's it. There's, that's all there really is to the structure. It's very simple. In this case, what I'm going to do, that's still running. So just in case we find anything else, we'll, we'll just let that go. And let's open up a new terminal. Now, how do we get into Redis? How do we access it? Well, there, there's ways to do it locally if we're on the server, but can we do it remotely? I want to try something different this video. So I haven't done this. Usually I resort to Google, but let's go ahead and let's, let's talk to chat GPT. So, uh, let's say, how can you access Redis, uh, a Redis server remotely? Let's see what it tells us. All right, so it first says you need to have Redis, you know, essentially have remote access to the server. Um, in addition to that, let's see if it gives us anything useful. Uh, let's see, it, okay, it mentions using the Redis client. This isn't really what we're looking for. I'm sure we can, we, let's go ahead and stop that. Uh, how do you access the Redis CLI remotely? Let's try that. 
All right, so this is looking a little better. So Redis CLI, so there's a command there, and that does look familiar. So this isn't the first Redis box that I've worked on. So this does look familiar. Let's go ahead and let's, yeah, okay, there we go. That's it. So essentially it says you need to use Redis-CLI, and it's going to be this format right here. If you want to specify a password, you can do a dash A. If you want to specify the port, it is 6379 by default. So if we don't specify it, then that's fine. It will use 6379. So if our scan showed a different port for Redis, then perhaps we'd want to specify it. But in this case, that's really all we need. So the first thing to do is make sure that we actually have Redis CLI installed. If we don't, we can install it. So if we do Redis CLI dash dash help, there we go. We do get that it is installed locally. If we scroll up here, we have the command usage. The most important thing is dash H and then host name. Um, in our case though, let's go ahead. And before we do that, I wanna point out something. So here's our IP right here. So Redis is one of the services and there's a lot of services like Redis that this applies to. You don't actually even have to use the Redis CLI. If I were to say telnet to the IP address and then I specify the port number, because Telnet by default will not use 6379. If I go ahead and do that, let's hit enter. Look at this, I'm connected. So at this point, I need to issue some kind of Redis command and we're gonna do it both ways, by the way. We're gonna use the Redis CLI and I just wanted to show you very quickly the Telnet method too. Um, but we don't know any Redis commands. So let's go to Google. And what I like is actually, I like doing Redis and then maybe the port number and I'll do hack tricks. That's a great resource. So if I go here to this first result, we see here, let's go down. Uh, let's see if we can find something useful. We've already logged in. So, um, okay, so we have a couple of commands here. We have info. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll just type in info and hit enter. All right, so we can see here, we do get feedback from the Redis server. So. I'm gonna actually exit out of this and we're gonna do the Redis CLI method, but I just wanted to point out, you don't have to use the Redis CLI, you can use Telnet. It's not as ideal, but it does work. Most importantly, what we're looking for here and what we'll verify with the Redis CLI is this, key space. So this is essentially where the data is stored. So in our case, we see DB zero, that is important, we need that zero. We see keys equal four. So that's probably something interesting for us. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. We'll actually redo this just with the Redis CLI. So again, we'll do Redis CLI dash H. We'll specify our IP address and let's see if we can get in. And there we go. We can tell that we're in because we see the little carrot and now we see the IP and port number of our Redis server. So just like before, if we do info and we hit enter, we do see that we have key space here. We have a bunch of other data here as well, but this is really what we care about. Now let's go back to hack tricks. Let's go look through some of these commands. Uh, it actually shows right here, key space DB zero. That's what we were just doing. Um, look at this right here. It says select number to indicate the database, then keys asterisk to get keys and then get, and then the key name to get the data. So this is actually really helpful right here. So let's go over here to Redis CLI. We'll do, um, what was it? Uh, let's do select. And we're gonna specify the index here. The reason we're putting zero is because of this right here. If this said DB2, we would put select two. So we'll hit enter. From there, let's go ahead and do uh, keys asterisk. Okay, so we get these four keys, remember it said right here, keys equal four, there's four keys. So these are our keys. The most interesting, of course, out of all of these is flag. So to access that, all we gotta do is say get, and then you specify the key. In this case, the key is this, not the number. Just to illustrate my point, let's go ahead and do get two. See how it says nil? Now watch, if we do get flag, there is our flag, so that's it. We've gotten our flag, we are done with this box. So I hope this was helpful for you. This was a relatively easy one, but you probably noticed it's starting to get a little harder. The takeaway from this video is to research these services. When you see during your scan over here, we see TCP, you know, 6379, Redis, 
the first thing we should be doing is researching. What is Redis? How can I access it remotely? Chat GPT was, you know, my, my search was not so great, but the point is whether you use Google or Chat GPT or Hacktricks, the point is research that service and most importantly, how to access it remotely. So that said, again, I hope you found it useful. Make sure you hit subscribe on your way out for videos just like this. Until next time, stay nerdy.